Welcome to this episode of All Things Delivered. We will look into how user-friendly and scalable supply chain visibility solutions can have a remarkable impact on your fulfillment and logistics operations. Stick with us. Technology innovation has never moved as fast as it is today, and it will never move this slow again. So now is the time to accelerate your supply chain transformation at the speed of AWS. Join us to explore the supply chain of the future today. On this episode of our season-long dive into a shipment's life cycle, we look into the way goods are manufactured overseas and are delivered just in time at destination. Learn how cargo owners can make sure this is really happening using the serverless architecture of AWS Lambda, Amazon RDS, and other cloud services. Later, I'll be talking with our subject matter experts, Eric Top and Daniel O'Coin, about what this all means for the supply chain of the future in our Insights Roundtable. But now, for our manifest segment, it's time to look at all things delivered with Gnosis Freight. I'm very excited to have with us today Gnosis Freight and their CTO, Jake Hoffman. Jake, thank you for being with us today. Yes, thank you, Michele. I'm really glad to be here. We have seen how a common problem to companies operating on cross-border trade is to gather data from multiple sources to track their shipments across multiple modes. Can you tell us how Gnosis Freight helped these companies to solve this challenge? I think it's important when we talk about this problem to level set on how global shipping and, and how large the industry is. Global shipping ocean containers account for 95% of the world's trade. So things travel in the air, they travel on truck, but uh, anything that you see around you, 95% of that has been in an ocean container. I mean, on a single international container shipment, uh, there could be up to 20 different companies involved and it could change hands up to 20 different times. When that happens, when you have so many different people that are involved in one single shipment, um, every single party in that chain has their own systems, their own data structure, right? Somebody cares about the purchase order, somebody cares about um, the boat that it's on, right? And so whenever that happens, um, it's difficult for our customer, who's the BCO, the shipper, the, the end user of, of these goods after they've been in transit, um, to organize their data and actually take action on it. You mentioned systems. Can you go a little bit deeper and make some examples? Sure. Uh, a tire company. Somebody who's importing tires from, say, Europe into the United States. Um, for that company, they're importing tires. You know, there's somebody that's manufacturing the tire. There's the ocean carrier that is putting the tire in the container and then bringing it across on a ship. It gets to the United States, it's in a truck, and it goes to maybe the tire company's warehouse, but then it ends up going to an auto manufacturer, to that auto manufacturer's facility. So th the data that tells the tire company whose tire that is it going to be, whether it's you know a car, a truck, an, ele an electric vehicle, a race car, whatever it is, I mean, who that customer is, lives inside of the shipper's ERP system and their, their purchase order system, right? Um, but the person that's transporting that container across the ocean, they don't care. They don't know. And so the way that Gnosis approaches this problem is we take the data from you know, this siloed system here, that's the tire company, we join it together with our, our track and trace data around the container, and we can tell the tire company, hey, you're bringing this tire going to this auto manufacturer. Um, you committed to get this tire here by this date. If you don't get it there, the auto manufacturer might have to shut down a line. They might have to stop producing cars, which is really expensive. Yeah. Yeah, so you are in the business of connecting multiple uh, pieces of software, so transportation management systems, CRPs, uh, uh, warehouse management systems, and, 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 and more, and across multiple modes, multiple players. This uh, entails uh, uh, a substantial level of complexity. How are you leveraging on uh, AWS and cloud computing to, to deliver in this, uh, in this scenario? Sure, we, we use a variety of AWS services. We use Amazon RDS, um, for structuring our data internally and, and building that data model of what the entire journey looks like. We use S3 buckets for all of the unstructured data and files that exist in this international freight journey. Examples of that would be commercial invoices, um, that's, which is usually a PDF or sometimes an Excel file, um, packing lists, bills of lading, those kinds of official documents that are just unstructured, but it's important data to, to the system. And so that's where that transition from the unstructured to the structured is where we use Lambda. It, our, our serverless environment that we have and taking in all of these unstructured outputs and then structuring it and giving it to our customers in a way that they can digest it is, is another way that we're using it that I think is really valuable for our customers. Would you like to walk us through your, uh, your architecture in more details? You know, I mentioned the, the unstructured data in, in S3 and 
I, there, there's the PDFs that that we take that are unstructured, but they have important information in them. A PDF can tell you what's inside the container and tell you how much it costs. It can give you important information about that. So we use um, different programming languages to build functions that extract the data from that PDF using computer vision, using whatever it is, um, to take that and show it to our customers in a, in a cool way. And that taking in all of that information, all that unstructured data, if we were doing that in a where we had one server, say how we used to do this before we used Lambda and the serverless architecture, we'd have to queue up all of these different resource, all of these different unstructured data pieces, all these PDFs and Excel files that would be just kind of going in a straight line into our system. But with the serverless architecture and taking that, we can throw a bunch of unstructured data at Lambda, essentially throwing it at Lambda, and Lambda takes it, provisions it out across multiple nodes, and processes it all at one time and puts it into our database so our customers can use it. Uh, so you're, you're taking away a lot of complexity from the customer, uh, but clearly this entails building a sophisticated uh, a piece of software running on a uh, on a cloud infrastructure in the backend. Which kind of technological challenges you need to solve? The the technology gap between say transportation and logistics and some other industries. They may be behind finance or real estate or whatever other industry that people want to compare it to. They're busy right now moving things around the world. The past couple of years with everything that's been going on, supply chain has been busier than ever. And the people that are, the truck drivers, the ocean carriers, the freight forwarders. Um, the people that have been making all this work never took a day off. They had to make sure that everybody's goods got to their house while they were you know, under quarantine or whatever it might be, right? While that's all going on, they're also being asked to upgrade their data infrastructure to, hey, well, company B, why are you not upgrading and have an API that I can connect to? Well, because they're busy doing their jobs and doing the things that move it around. And so the way that Gnosis approaches that problem rather than demand that this company gives us a new API that we can extract data from their system, we build um, the e an EDI wrapper, right? I mentioned S3 in our serverless architecture. We can take whatever kind of messages they have. If it's a PDF, if it's, if it's an EDI 315 message with an ETA update, whatever that is, we build a wrapper around that. We take that information in and put it in a structured way so that other parties along the supply chain can interact with that data. And so it's really bridging the gap between the legacy architecture and what other software developers and people are used to um, in developing software today. This EDI wrapper that you built, uh, which kind of uh, value uh, is, uh, is creating for, uh, for BCOs or logistics service providers? An EDI transaction happens, and, and it's, you know, whether it happens immediately and then you see the data somewhere or it happens in a batch, you know, there's batch systems that take in a bunch of files and then something happens that makes the customer see that data. It's like, oh, my shipment arrived in my warehouse today, but I don't find out about it for two days. The architecture that we've built, we've wrapped that EDI message in something that is immediate, that's low latency, that is um, a part of this cloud architecture that someone who's in Asia or someone who's in the United States is going to see the same piece of information that was digested from the trucker, say delivering that to the warehouse, all at once because the latency is so low. And with the cloud architecture, it's globally deployed. So it's not an on-premise thing. It's not like we need to get this uh, system to send a message to this system across the world. It's all housed in the same cloud infrastructure um, that everybody can have access to it at once. So the time savings are, are tough to estimate, but they're they're huge. So you're, you're moving away from the uh, kind of legacy framework of uh, batching uh, towards near real-time transmission of milestones. Correct. And, and we're doing that in a way that is, we think, conducive to the people that are operating in logistics now. Um, we're not asking anybody to jump into our box um, our team works really hard. I'm really proud of our guys, our engineers that work on um, working with these the legacy ERP systems, the TMSs and the things that are out there because we don't want to have to tell all the people in the industry to change the way they do things. They're good at what they do. And so if we can meet people where they're at and eliminate that change management, then it, the ROI on that is huge. And there's no six month, a year long implementation of, hey, how can we get data from point A to point B? Our team is going to work to do that. Right? And we're, and we're going to make that connection. And hopefully we can take that connection we made to, to company A and then replicate it across 100 others that use that same system in the space. What is at the horizon? Uh, what else is in your roadmap? And how cloud computing is helping you to deliver such a roadmap? For Gnosis, our, we're, we're really ambitious. Our team is ambitious. Um, we want to be the container operating system for global trade. And you hear people talk about that, but we're, the way we're doing it, I think, is unique in that we're going and meeting people where they are. Um, I'm really proud of our engineers for going and integrating with all the many different systems like I've, I've talked about. 
But in order for us to do that and how cloud computing can help us get there is through three things, through global deployment, scalability, and low latency. Now, the global deployment piece, we want information that we create through all of our different processes to be accessible um, anywhere around the world. And that whenever we deploy something, we want that information to be accessible in a factory or at a a retail site in the United States. Um, And then low latency, we want that to happen immediately, not two days after something happens, right? Um, And then the scalability piece, we want to be able to have one container track through our system where it's like one one piece that's through that, but then also a million pieces. If we have a million containers we want to track, which is where we want to go, then we want our systems to be able to handle that. And that's where we see cloud computing helping us get there. And I believe that you're bringing a a really fresh perspective uh, to uh, cross-border trade. uh, And thank you for being with us, Jake. Yes, thank you, Michele. I really enjoyed being here. We have seen how important is visibility to improve and optimize uh, fulfillment operations but also customer experience and meeting the customer where they are is super important. Meeting the customer in the middle here is incredibly important as to what's going on in the actual market space today. The industry that we're in has historically been one that has been slow to adopt new technologies and also slow to adapt to change that's in the marketplace. Uh, Alvin Toffler, who was a, a, a writer in the 70s, wrote an amazing book called Future Shock that talked about you know, the more rapid the pace of change, the greater impact to the individual or the organization. If what we've seen in the recent years with COVID, it's actually the other way around. You know, the, we've had such great impact to, you know, uh, how we're doing things and the overall culture that it's now driving rapid change. And you have an industry that's not really used to actually changing. So it's incredibly important to try to tie this all back together with to them and get them solutions that are easy to use easy to implement and solve problems that exist today. It's also important, however, to be using cloud technologies, which allow your developers and as you build products to build those quickly so you can accelerate your time to value. A good example of this is trying to build in scaling into a a traditional Mm -hmm. application. This can be very difficult. However, through the use of things like serverless technologies, you can automate that scaling And so that as executions need to increase, so can the concurrency of your serverless applications. And this is extremely important as companies try to keep up with the pace of growth of their data that they need to process. If you look at the supply chain as a mesh network of multiple Mm -hmm. entities collaborating, uh, uh, you you really need to to get data from multiple sources to solve uh, very tactical problems, like when you're dealing with ports and uh, the drainage of containers. And you know, one of the greatest challenges in the industry is around this visibility of the actual data and once again, tying it all together as to what's going on. You know, There have been recent studies that have been done in the market space talking about that 57% of customers want greater visibility when it comes to you know, movements and where things are and what's actually going on. And in the same survey, 77% of them said that if they'd had this visibility you know, back during the pandemic, time that they would have been able to adapt to change and implement things that would have made life greater for them, you know, in the end. Now, these solutions, what we call RTT, VP, real-time transportation, you know, tracking and monitoring, basically allow customers to see what's going on, where things are, you know, what they're actually moving, and more importantly, get to predictive analytics to be able to do what to do about it. Yeah, the crystal ball, right? This is extremely important when you're building software solutions in supply chain. And ultimately, it's the quickest way to add value is by bringing predictive analytics. Yet oftentimes, when I talk to customers, it's not enough. You know, you also need to automate that decision-making process. An example of this could be through using something like Amazon AppFlow, which allows you to have bi-directional data transfer between SAP and AWS through the OData SAP connector. So we, we have seen how uh, to optimize fulfillment operations and intermodal operations is very important also to take into consideration change management processes and how uh, you need also to have an infrastructure, possibly cloud-based, that uh, allows uh, scalability uh, following the, the need of the business. Thank you for joining me. Please allow me to highlight three main takeaways for you. First, avoid point-to-point integrations. When building B2B integration with your trading partners, 
you might want to consider a third-party, fully managed visibility solution that simplifies and expedites your ability to receive and send freight milestones. Second, scalability is key. If you're building in-house, make sure to adopt serverless architectures, enabling quick scalability for your applications. This is going to help a lot, especially when peak season will demand increased resources for your business workloads. And lastly, architecting layers. On top of your B2B integration application, you can build data lakes, data warehouses, and even API integrations with other business applications using cloud services like Amazon Appflow. Thanks for watching. See you soon.